It arrived! <laughs> this is a box from Filament One, and it holds all of the filament I'm gonna need for my next project just in time for Halloween. Eight spools of fantastic filament, and this is all 2.85 millimeter in size. Yes, you guessed it. The 3D Platform 300 Series Workbench Pro is gonna be printing something very big. This model is thanks to Nick Daimlo, you know him as Bugman140, on the socials. He showcased a 3D printable gravestone that held a phone, and the phone showed animations on screen from Atmos FX through a hole in the middle of the print. It's a great idea, but wouldn't it be more interesting if it was, I don't know, life-sized? <laughs> I certainly think so. Let's get to printing! <laughs> Look at all these empty spools. There's eight, well, what once were full spools of filament and those were used for this project. It's two parts. There's an inner part to this gravestone and there's a frame. Well, let me show you the inner part. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's huge. You could <laughs> look. <laughs> this is amazing and it looks, it looks fantastic. It was one and a half spools of filament. It's a 1.0 millimeter nozzle and it was 0.5 millimeter layer height. The part warped though when it was done. Look at that, it's got a, it's got a little bend to it. So Surprisingly, the detail was great, and when I brought it to larger scale, some sanding will be required. I think, uh, I, I think that's, that's appropriate, but just look at that. <laughs> Before I show you the frame, we really need to talk. The frame is 949 and change millimeters long, and while the machine has a one meter by one meter print area, it's closer to 950 millimeters on the Y. This means a 949 millimeter model with a skirt two millimeter offset isn't gonna fit. <sighs> Thankfully, I had the model centered as much as possible, and even though part of the skirt is now part of the model, I'm okay with this. With such a large model, it also means parts of it are on the very, very edge of what's printable space. This means it's also on the outer edge of the heater for the bed. While the temp for the bed was 60C, the edge most definitely wasn't near 60C. If you couple that with the crazy forces at work mentioned before, and you get part lifting. I did catch it early on, and this is why you see hot glue around the model. I thought maybe that would keep it from lifting anymore. It, it worked, sort of. Anyway, it's too big. <laughs> Here it is. Six and a half spools of filament. Again, a one millimeter nozzle, 0.5 millimeter layer height. The part warped while printing. Print quality is crazy good, all things considered. The walls look good. There was this weird layer shift over here that I, I don't know what caused it. And it, there's bad part quality where it lifted. Now with both parts done, next steps are sanding priming, painting, and getting it ready for some Atmos FX animations. <laughs>
oh my gosh, it's done. I can't believe this. And <laughs> I just finished painting like an hour or two ago. Legit. I can't wait to show it to you. It's right here. Just, I'm really proud of this. I think I did a good job. I want you to see this. Have a look, have a look. It's still too big to fit in the normal frame. <laughs> I got you, Canon R5. So here's what happened. This middle part, I've hot glued in. So around the border in the back is hot glue holding this into place. I don't know, I sprayed some, some gray on there. And then this, this part right here, this is, uh, I got some, some rattle can paint uh, espresso color and this green color. And what I would do is I sprayed the end of the chip brush and I would just kind of go in there and then down there. And that's what kind of gave it. I wanted to give it a, a brown and a green, you know, organic earthy colors as if there was something growing on it. I know we're gonna put some cool stuff in there, but before we do that, I'm just really, really, really happy with this. And I do know I would probably do some things different next time, such as I, I got that knockdown texture that I was pumping all over this thing. It was that white stuff and that just wasn't right. I should have just went straight to that stone paint because that was brilliant. Oh, that was brilliant. I loved it. Well, what do you think? How does it look to you? I really, really hope you like it because I love it a lot. But now, now comes the important part because at the original scale, you put a phone in there and played Atmos FX animations through the center. But my friend Jen let me borrow this. This is an Atmos FX digital decorating kit. It's a projector with an SD card, a remote, and like a, a white, What's over there? Hold on. With a with a with a cloth. So this is what you would Did it work? Did I fool your dog? So this is what the projector would project onto or behind to give the images in a, in a window or a porch or something like that. Just like this show on the box. So what I'm going to do is tape it. Tape it back here and project an image from behind and you should see ooey gooey gooey ghosty things right through here. I'm kind of excited about it. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna move some cameras around and then we're gonna have ourselves a full scale Halloween projection experience. Let's do it. <laughs> the lighting situation has changed just a little bit because we I have to have a tiny light on the front here so that the camera over there can see this. This is gonna be a screen. So just like a movie theater, if you have a bunch of lights shining at it, you're not gonna be able to see it. This one from behind though, this, well, we're gonna cut this one. I have a projector here, this is from Atmos FX. They have uh, different digital displays on an SD card in here, or you can hook it up via HDMI to a laptop or a video source, which is what I've got here. And uh, let's see, I'm gonna turn up my volume because these do have some sounds. Let's see what happens. I'm gonna cut the lights. Oh, I'm just ominous and blue, aren't I? Okay, here we go. Oh, my taskbar, what's going on? Hold on. Okay, now here we go. Ha ha ha, how's that looking? Oh, that looks great. You can still see some of the tombstone you can see the, you can see the effects here. I'll tell you what, I'm just gonna cut the lights over here. How about that? Now you can see what's going on through the crack there. That's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. Well, what do you say we try a different one? <laughs> That's fantastic. Look at that. Oh, you can see it right through there. That's kind of freaky right there. Tell you what, I'll turn the light on just a little bit. Don't get scared. Okay, this one, uh, it's kind of a, like a goblin eye in there. Let's see what else we got. I downloaded some more, and it's not just eyes. Oh, here we go. This is called Paranormal Passage. Uh-uh, uh-uh, nope, 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 n
that's fantastic. It's like they're trying to escape. All right, let's do one more, one more. Oh, I see. It's like they're, they're trying to break through. It's like they're trying to break through. <laughs> Look at that. That's pretty cool. Okay. Wait. Oh, is it still going? Still trying to break out. I'll tell you what, we got we got one more to show you. It's gonna need the light on. Ready? One, two. <laughs> well, dang it, that was a bunch of fun. That that was more fun. That was more fun than it should have been. Here, let's turn this light back up to ludicrous settings. Well, shoot, that was fun. I'm, I'm really glad we got the chance to do this. Wow, well, a big thanks for everybody that helped make this possible. Of course, uh, 3D, 3D, 3DP Unlimited? 3D Platform? Can't even talk. A big thanks to 3D Platform for letting me borrow the really big $38,000 3D printer in my garage. I'm having a lot of fun with it, so more projects coming up. And a big thanks to Filament One for supplying this filament. It is PLA Plus or PLA Select? I don't know, but it printed like butter and it's fantastic. I'll put a link down in the description. Go visit, check out their stock. It prints well. Um, I highly recommend it. Uh, a big thanks to my friend Jen. She let me borrow this Atmos FX projector and hooked me up with some of those animations. Atmos FX is a local to Seattle company. Man, go check them out. I'll put a link down in the description there. Uh, if you're a big fan of Halloween and you wanna keep it going, my buddy David developed and came up with the AudioJack app. It's almost like audio movies for your mind. And there's a great Halloween section that he's putting together. I'll put a link down in the description. Go download the AudioJack app. It's free to download and uh, keep Halloween going. Well, listen, I'm gonna consider this a fantastic success. I've got a great decoration for Halloween and it doesn't need to have the projector. It doesn't need this. I could, I could, I could put some green paper there and we could composite in something. How fun. Listen, if you made it this far, you're awesome. Go download this model. Uh, last but certainly not least, a big thanks to Nick Daimlo. You know him as Bugman140 on the socials. I'll put the link to the normal sized one <laughs> down in the description as well. Oh, I'm so happy. Thank you for joining me along on this journey. I feel like I got to be creative. I really, really miss that. I love painting and I love being able to, to take a product or a, a print and finish it. It's, it's just glorious. Listen, if you made it this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more, fight for a cause you believe in, and from a safe distance, high five. Ooh, I'm scary. Social security will run out before you get it. <laughs> oh my gosh. This is nuts. Just freaking nuts.